Welcome everyone to today's show and on today's episode we are super excited to introduce you to Niraj Naik who is an ex-pharmacist turned holistic health expert. Also known as a renegade pharmacist and founder of the International School of Breathwork, Summer Breath. So welcome to the show, Niraj. It's so good to have you here. Great uh, to be here too. Yes. Super excited to have this conversation. Is Obviously, you're joining us from Ibiza, which is now where you're residing. Uh, so I'd love for you to just introduce yourself for us, for any of our listeners maybe don't know who you are, just a bit about your journey and your backstory um, and any kind of pivotal moments that have led to where you are now. Yeah, sure. Um, so I used to be a pharmacist many years ago in the UK, um, in Reading. I don't know if you know Reading. Yep. But, yeah, it was not the most exciting place. And uh, I actually got really disillusioned with the whole healthcare system um, and ended up getting actually a chronic illness that left me housebound for almost a year. And it was going through that healing journey. It was an autoimmune disease, completely stress related, as I, you know, found out later, even though the consultant at the time told me that stress doesn't do anything to do it, it's all genetics and you need to take pills and all this nonsense. Um, anyways, going through that, I realized, you know, what really makes us get sick. And um, I also found a solution to it, completely changed my life uh, within a few months. Um, and then I was like, I need to get this out to more people because this, this is revolutionary, it really works. So I started to share it with other people and I made a website called therenegadepharmacist.com and uh, yeah, started putting content out there and one of the articles went ridiculously viral once and that, that got me a bit of a break and got me a bit of awareness. Um, but my big passion was really still in um, what I was doing with music and the breath because I figured out ways to combine breathing techniques which helped me a lot, the pranayama techniques, with my passion for music because music's like a big... Uh, passion for my I used to actually run raves in the UK like in my youth when I was um, at university still and that's what I always thought I was going to do but one thing led to another ended up doing the safe thing and became a pharmacist but anyway like the great thing was was I combined those two back together like and I realized music's actually very therapeutic and has a power to bring people together it can forms communities cultures but it also has a power to help people go deep within and you know so i started to make all this therapeutic music it got it's got used by therapists around the world like people like marissa peer who's quite well known um even mind valley used it uh, and then um people like wim hoff i ended up making a whole soundtrack to the wim hoff method he's a pretty famous dude now um and and so on yeah and then i but i i went in really deep into uh pranayama and started to combine different techniques from pranayama with music to create a experience which we've been taking around the world this soma breath awakening experience we call it it's a combination of different pranayama techniques with rhythmic music and breathing um and it's a guided meditation it's like it's an experience that leaves you going oh my god what what the hell just happened but <laughs> at the same time it's also really therapeutic for the body it's very healing and there's many like I mean, breathwork's become like huge now, but um, there's many different styles of breathwork that's out there. And some people get scared of breathwork because it's too like intense or too many orgasms going on. Or, um, you know, there's like people screaming and having fits of laughter, crying, whatever. But with so much breath, this technique, it takes you into bliss states instead of like that crazy catharsis it takes people more into bliss and connection and and like a, having a psychedelic trip that's under your control without all of the 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 side effects that can go with it so yeah and this became this has become very popular it started in Copangan actually but it's become quite popular um and we train instructors in doing this experiences for people because it's like an amazing like morning routine you can do with people it's a great like way to actually wake up um but also have like a fun experience with and like celebrate like create like a ceremony with friends to celebrate something with an in, a joint intention there's many uses of it but we also train instructors on the other pranayama breathing techniques um because there's many and it's really like a pharmacy of different techniques 
So if you look at tantric yoga, tantric yoga is a strong foundation is pranayama. Um, and tantric yoga really is all about learning how to manipulate the energy in the body. And so therefore, it really is understanding your inner pharmacy. Because you it, the, manipulating the energy in the body is how we create our own medicines, how we switch off stress, turn on stress. It's, how we, it's like the remote control for the mind, body, and the spirit. So, um, so that's what we do is we train our instructors on exactly how to use this, this remote control, which is the breath and the, and the different postures and movements that go with it. And yeah, and we've, we've had some incredible results. We even have Cambridge University studying us now. We've got almost 2,000 instructors around the world. It's growing really fast. Um, and it's not like this one size fits all, you know, like it's just, I'll just do this one technique. It's not like that. There's, it's literally like a pharmacy, a library of different techniques, mm -hmm. but with scientific understanding behind why does this work? No dogma, like demystified. Um, mm -hmm. And so that everyday people can understand it as well. I love so, yeah, that. That's what we got that. now. Such a cool mission. And also, obviously, from where you started to, to where you've grown to is, is fantastic. And it's clearly like so much evidence backing up what it is you're doing with the results that people are getting as well. I'd love to, for you to just maybe tell us a little bit more about your early experience, because a lot of our listeners, um, you know, some of them will be in potentially experiencing autoimmune conditions or stress related conditions um whether they're diagnosed or whether they're in those kind of early stages and for some people it can be a bit of a jump to go from that kind of level of suffering straight in kind of deep dive into something like summer breath so what what was your journey like kind of moving into this stuff or was you just like okay diagnosed not accepting this in i go like what what, what did that look like for you um yeah like they say God sends a gift of desperation, but literally I was so desperate that I, I had no choice. There was a, these are the two choices the consultant gave me. They said, either you be a guinea pig for a drug that hasn't been tested yet, and or you have your colon removed. And she was so cold and sterile the way she said it. So I literally shit myself. And if, if with ulcerative colitis, you're already shitting yourself. So I was shitting myself even more. And she told me that. Um, so I went from 40 times a day to 50 times a day, you know, oh, so, geez, um, geez. so basically I, I said, so I, I just prayed like for, for help, you know, to something higher than myself. And they say that there's these moments that shape people. That's usually the, the worst moment. It's the, the judgment day, you know, it's that, that when you, it's the dark night of the soul when you, there's nothing else. Um, there's no hope, nothing else, you know, and suddenly some angel comes to the rescue at that moment. I think it's a, there's something that happens in these moments. It's a state of consciousness shift. You go into a higher state of consciousness beyond yourself and you start to tap into another frequency of thought. Either you can do this through intense suffering, right? So shamans actually put themselves into crazy intense states, right? Just on purpose to be able to reach these Satori-like experiences, these massive eureka moments you know these bursts of gamma brain waves right that can happen in near-death states so um you can either do it like that or you can do it through other people's inspiration right by following a similar process that they've done so that you don't have to get to a point of intense suffering right so that's that's been my my job has been to give people who are ready for it and this is the other thing about consciousness is that usually the information arrives when the person's ready for it okay when they and it's usually that 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 moment where the truth comes out from all the layers of conditioning right and that for some people unfortunately it's that make or break moment but a lot of people i'm realizing now are already starting to wake up big time you know with all the shit crazy shit that's going on in the world People are starting to have an actual conscious shift and an urge, a curiosity to move towards the truth of who they really are, which is actually we already have everything we need inside this body. We don't need to rely on external things. So I'm merely helping people understand that. And it's also through my example that it's, it's really like reaching a lot of people. And we push, we push it really hard to help people get there. 
Um, and I've tried to make it as simple as possible, right? Mm. To help people do it, right? Like, so, and I'm not the only way. There's many different ways. Like you could do the Wim, some people would do the Wim Hof method. It's really good. It's yeah. excellent for people with autoimmune issues. It's a fast track, get straight into doing something that shifts the energy, right? So, you know, I, I recommend a lot of people, if they've never done anything before, like do that at least, just try that, you know? Cause it's so simple, very easy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so we also have then the layers deeper for people who do that and get a taste of it and like, wow, I want to go deeper. This is what happened with me. Mm. Like I, my Swami told me some very basic pranayama techniques and that put me down the rabbit hole. And then boom, I was like doing everything under the sun until yeah. I found the stuff that really made a difference. And that's what we put together with Soma Breath. So I help people, um, bridge the gap, gap too because um we have this musical technique where you're just breathing with re really cool i think it's cool anyway i, I hope others see um this uh this music that just takes you on a trip and it's like effortless way to meditate all right so there's other ways to meditate but with this musical practice it makes the process of this meditation technique that gets you really connected to your truth and really starts to um, turn on the healing process using this positive state called intermittent hypoxia. Intermittent hypoxia is the mechanism of action of pranayama. Of it's the most revered technique in pranayama is called kumbhaka, which is the breath holds, the breath retention parts. But um, there's various ways to do it, and there's a lot of science. There's a guy called Buteko, Doctor. Constantine Buteko created the Buteko method. He made an amazing system of breathing practices uh, many years ago. And there's so much science behind um, modulating your carbon dioxide tolerance and becoming more efficient at using oxygen and getting oxygen really to cells where it needs to go. And the ancient yogis, which is where Buteko got a lot of his ideas from, they kind of knew that the root cause of most diseases is poor body tissue oxygenation is not getting oxygen to the actual body tissues not the we're not talking about your red blood cells we're talking about getting them from your red blood cells to the rest of your body right to, to the organs and muscles the tissues and so they devise an entire system of pranayama you could say is a method of getting these this oxygen to your cells however if you want it to work, you've got to want to do it. You've got to look forward to doing it. You've got to be ex practicing this stuff regularly. And this is where things fall apart. What, what I found was the big problem with is sticking to stuff, right? And so I've made something that's really sticky, right? I literally have this one lady who um, recently, it's, just, it's just a great story. I love telling it because she... Uh, had severe fibromyalgia. She, she, and she's like from England, like Wales, actually. Really sweet lady. But she, you wouldn't think that she'd be into anything esoteric, like when you talk to her, like anything, like remotely spiritual. But she was so desperate. She had a desperate moment, like myself. She was going to be in a wheelchair. She was taking thirty-six pills a day. She was really, really. She was like puking up, as well as uh, shitting blood at the same time it was like horrendous her situation and she found our stuff she she got into that moment of desperation and she decided to try it right this one meditation breath meditation that we've got and she got so hooked on the music that she just played it and did it several times a day right we call it a daily dose that you can repeat it a couple of times a day and it gives you this dose of intermittent hypoxia this is the therapeutic dose that makes you know even things like the wim hof method work the breathing part of it so what makes buteco method work it's that lowering the oxygen for a brief period creates this overall strengthening effect in the physiology and it wakes up endogenous stem cells and it your ability to self-heal right this is the most revered technique of kumbhaka in pranayama she was so hooked to this thing that she just did it over and over for six months and boom she wasn't 
taking any pills anymore. She stopped having to be in the wheelchair and um, sh she came back to full weight, like body weight. You know, she wasn't puking up and she didn't wow. blood anymore. Mm -hmm. And we did an interview. You can check it out on YouTube because it's such a fascinating story. Yeah, and she said she just fell in love with the music. The music was the thing that just made her want to do it all the time. And same thing with, uh, there was another guy called um, uh, Ruben who had this uh, muscle wasting disease, muscular dystrophy, where his muscles were wasting away. He's had it, childhood disease. Uh, the doctor said there's no cure to it. You're going to degenerate and basically end up in a wheelchair and die young kind of thing. He couldn't even lift up his grandson right he was he got to a point where he couldn't lift up his grandson and the grandson was six months old and um so basically he discovered our and this guy is the last the most least likely person to do anything spiritual right least likely guy he's he heard an interview i think um and he uh got recommended um to do this our 21 day protocol so he did one track from that and then he loved the music and he carried on doing it followed, finished the 21 days and then every day because he just loved this one session we, it's, a, it's our daily dose he just did this every day religiously for six months a um, couple of times a day and he says he's never been able to do any spiritual practice before because he just finds it too boring his mind can't focus he can't sit there with attention you know and says the music just locks him in mm. and it takes him on a trip and he forgets that he's even doing anything right because it's it's like a journey where your space and time kind of gets lost mm. and he came back and he said he picked up his um grandson for the first time and he was <laughs> holding him properly like a you know like a real person like with strength and he was able to throw a ball over his head for the first time and so he could play like fetch with his dog which he hasn't been able to do for years Amazing. and he went to see the doctors the doctors were just freaked out they couldn't understand what's going on this doesn't make sense and it turned out that um his muscles were growing back all of his muscle tissue was growing back so the doctors were like that the only way they could explain this happening was that he'd waking up endogenous stem cells. So this is exactly what I was saying. Uh, so I've been telling everybody is that when you create an intermittent hypoxic state, brief period, this is what the Russian scientists had discovered, but people ignored. Um, you wake up our own ability to self heal, lower information. It works through creating nitric oxide and endogenous stem cells and it creates a cascade of different effects that strengthens, heals, nourishes the body. And the other thing with our technique is the rhythmic breathing. Rhythmic breathing harmonizes all the functions in your body. It brings back balance. It, it, breath is the most fastest way to restore balance to the nervous system. If it's overly stressed, just with a few minutes of rhythmic breathing, you can bring it into balance. And you can really manipulate the energy in a positive way. So that's what my technique is. It's a combination of rhythmic breathing that harmonizes the nervous system, um, bringing you into states of intermittent hypoxia, controlled stress response. And um, the music just makes it effortless, fun, cool. Everyone can do it every day. It doesn't matter if you're sick, healthy, well. It doesn't matter. Anyone can do it and receive like all these amazing benefits from, from these breath practices that have been hidden for so long. Yeah, thanks to people like Wim Hof, now they're, they're more popular. So, big oh, respect to absolutely. To I, I, I've been doing breathwork for a, for a while now, and I my entry into breathwork was Wim Hof. Um, yeah. Was the retention He's breathing? I found that so powerful. Um, yeah. I at that time I was suffering from about four years of chronic back pain, which would affect my vision on really bad days. And I tried every injections in my spine physios chiropractors the whole lot nothing worked um and then i decide okay i need to find something else now i've got like i need to be a bit more open-minded because i was one of those people who was anti-spiritual was like what how's any of this stuff gonna benefit you it doesn't make any sense let me demystify the word spiritual to people yeah. who are anti-spiritual because spiritual the word comes from the latin word espiritu breath life espiritu yeah. energy right 
So spirituality, spiritual, it means to breathe, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. That's its essence. And then over time, it got turned into a religion, yes. right? But <laughs> actually, conspire means to breathe together. I don't know if you know that. Conspiracy yeah. means people get together and breathe together. Inspire means breathe in. Yeah. Expire Inspire means breathe, breathe out. out. And every time you breathe in, you activate thought. And that's why when we breathe in, we um, in a certain way, if you do a certain type of rhythmic breathing, you become more inspired, right? So, you know, there's a, this all there, all the clues are there throughout history. The breaths link to thought, mind, spirit. Absolutely. And then religion came and took over and added all these layers of dogma over the top. And that put people off right yeah. over the years because yeah. Yeah. unfortunately so let's demystify all that everyone's spiritual mm. we all breathe yeah. but we weren't given a manual on how to use it properly so we all breathe but we don't know how to use it properly to the max Absolutely. so this what we're handing is the manual you know, definitely it. and yeah, so i said i was in that in that old school mentality of spiritual equals religion and you know yeah stay away from it and it wasn't until i started um with with the half breathing and started to feel the benefits from it literally within two weeks of daily practice i remember standing up for one of my practices and the chronic back pain i had for four years just went it disappeared yeah. and i started to realize it wasn't a physical issue it was a lot of energetic blockages and emotions i was holding on to for a long long time yes. and that just helped me release and that's and, when and i started else, going deep and what else happens in, um is so when you create that state of intermittent hypoxia mm -hmm. And the nitric oxide nitric oxide is a massive vasodilator so you you what you do is you get blood flow going to parts of your body that haven't had blood flow for years yeah. and chronic pain and tension comes from what happens is the, the tension suppresses blood flow to certain areas and that's what leads to tension and pain and what causes that tension in the first place is some emotional trigger like like going through a, a shitty time in your life like a traumatic experience doing a job that you hate too much waking up every day go, feeling like you have to go to a job you don't want to do um that's enough to trigger chronic stress and then that chronic yeah. stress leads to all the symptoms you're talking about Absolutely. so yeah just by doing these breathing techniques you bring blood flow back to areas that haven't had blood flow and you yeah. can get spontaneous remission suddenly Definitely. And that's what I found so powerful. I mean, going deeper into that and finding um, other modalities like quantum flow. I've done your 21 day awakening online course as well. Um, yeah. And the funny thing is that all of those modalities, the thing, the, the common theme across was that combination of breath and music. Um, mm. And that was just so powerful because I tried the breathing without the music and I still felt a benefit from it. But when I attached the music with it, it just, it, uh, it times it by 10 is high the, the, yeah. it was so intense it was crazy it was amazing um and the cool thing with the music is um so this is the thing that, this is a bit that i really brought to the table is um so when you breathe in a rhythm okay that's when we create all these amazing physiological changes and effects and rhythmic breathing is the foundation of yogic tantric breathing right if you look at all of if you go into the freemasons go into the occult practices, which they all do breathing practices, by the way, all these secret societies and stuff. Uh, tantric practices are, is a core part of what these guys do for, to create magic, right? They're all conspiring, okay? They're all breathing together, <laughs> funny enough. But um, these are very powerful practices because they, they can be used for magic as well. Like really, like in magic in the sense of you can program your mind to create results it's powerful hypnotic tools um so that's why people use it as a personal development tool as a self-improvement tool it's like an upgrade right so um rhythm is the key part of it however i don't know how why no one thought of it before but the music has a beat and when you breathe in beats you naturally become rhythmic with your breath so that's what I started doing when I was um, uh, trying to heal myself from this illness. I realized in pranayama, you're counting in seconds, right? But if you're counting in your mind, and this is the problem with pranayama, if you count using a mala bead or um, in your head, like in, two, three, out, two, you know, 
um, you're actually stuttering the breath. And the goal of pranayama is smoothness. Your breath should become smooth, right? If it's jerky, erratic, it's usually a sign of a erratic nervous system. But if you breathe and count in your mind, you actually create jerkiness, stuttering, unconsciously. By it just happens. You you'll feel it if you observe it, doing it. You'll you'll notice it happens. So, but with music, you just time the breath to the music, and you naturally are then breathing in. In beats and our music is the time the tempo that I use everything means that you're breathing in seconds and um, and what happens is like because I've gone really deep into the breath patterns and rhythms and uh, you can create all sorts of altered brainwave states this is what Cambridge University is studying right now and also enhance physiological function so as you're saying, that's why, like, that's what takes it to another level. It's not just breathing with mu. It's not like just breathing with music in the background. It's yeah. literally yeah. your breath is dancing with the beat of the of the music, and that is that breath dance combination mm -hmm. that changes everything. That's that's the absolutely. Game. Well, that's yeah. something that that I found when I th first started any kind of breathing practice. Is I was well, just generally, I was never very rhythmic at all, and the music obviously really helped that. Um, I'm curious to know a little bit more about like the different brainwave states that people can start to access and why they would be useful to somebody. So if somebody is thinking, right, okay, well, breath, you sold me on that. Um, if they're now thinking, okay, well, this, this music thing might also help, how, why would it benefit them aside from the tempo? Is there anything about frequency uh, that yes. makes a real difference within this experience at Summer Breath? Totally, yeah. So this is what Cambridge is studying right now. So basically... Um, where, where I was just talking about magic. Okay, let's let's demystify magic for a moment. Okay, so they've already found this scientifically that we have right a consciousness. Well, they there's a debate about consciousness, but we have an electrical charge of nervous system impulses of the som soma, the body, the somatic intelligence, which is our brain, which then a mind arises from that. It's, and if you look at it, we're like, we have an operating system and a hard disk, right? Let's say that the neurology, the nervous system is the hard disk, the hardware, and the operating system is the mind. Like the, a computer analogy is cool. Now, this gets conditioned, programmed by society, culture, like literally apps being installed in the operating system. And this is what creates, this is epigenetics as well. It's what creates habits, patterns, belief systems, we call reality tunnels. So predictable patterns of behavior that leads people into a certain way of life, a, a, a trance that people move through throughout life, like getting a certain job, marrying a certain person, getting a certain house. It's very predictable. Most, if you look, like so many people are so predictable. You know that they're going to do this, they're going to do that. They're going to end up with this career and do that. Especially Indians. They either become doctors, pharmacists, lawyers, or accountants, right? Um, so, so basically this is a default for a lot of people. This is what creates the ego. Now, as I said, there's a wake up that can happen with some people like Satori effects, like going through a near death experience, taking a huge dose of psilocybin, MDMA, right? People have this boom, like sudden, even smoking a joint can do this first time smoking a really good Californian bud, boom, can like weigh people out, out of their trance and go, holy shit, is that my life? No way, there's more to it than that. And then people start to change their perception of who they are and things change, right? And I, I've read like a, a bunch of like books and things and autobiographies, very famous, successful people saying that it was some sudden aha moment that came from either Silas Sibin, like Steve Jobs, um, you know, or Ayahuasca, uh, Sting, he writes his entire autobiography begins with Ayahuasca trip. So, you know, there's, there's lots of people who have taken like heavy doses of psilocybin and psychedelics or whatever to wake themselves up suddenly and see themselves in a new way. And then that's where they get these divine downloads that go on to change humanity. Right. Um, so this takes people into all extraordinary levels of thinking like levels of consciousness beyond themselves and 
the mystics knew that there are other layers of consciousness beyond just this physical nervous system. There's another n nervous system. Uh, Sheldrake calls it the morphogenetic field, right? It's the consciousness of the entire planet, all right? And um, he got censored, actually, for talking too much about this stuff on TED. TED Talk. He did a TED Talk, very famous TED Talk, got banned. Um, usually when they cancel someone, it's because they're telling the truth these yeah. days. They, you <laughs> yeah. know that, right? So um, anyway, so there's this. Mystics have always talked about there's another level of consciousness we can tap into. Shamans get into these states by doing near-death experiences, like tying themselves up in the desert, you know, vision quests or whatever it's called, um, or doing massive psych psychedelics doses uh, or some type of meditative technique, right? So now when you shake this up, this level of consciousness up, you go into another higher state of consciousness where you can see yourself in a whole new way and you can, if you know how, you can reprogram yourself. So very powerful hypnotherapy can get people into these states where you can reprogram, deprogram. But there's earlier imprints that are very hard to shake. These are like your perception of what's safe, what's unsafe, your level of like taking risks, you know, um, and also your level of creativity, your ability to think outside of the box. These are hardwired grain into you from a very young age. And hypnotherapy sometimes touches on it, but even these early imprints, these, these happen like the moment you're born and also in the first couple of years of your life, um, they're so hard to shift that they can even lead and manifest later on as disease. So this is why like severe depression, things like that, um, can be treated by big doses of psilocybin, MDMA. Now here's the thing. What they found, and this one scientist, uh, Jeff Tarrant, did a small study with our, our technique. He found with our same breath protocol, people were creating the same altered brainwave state, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're producing gamma frequencies, higher frequencies than ordinary levels of thinking. That usually takes years and years to do through deep meditation. We were doing it in 22 minutes. And he was like blown away. So like saying you're, you're creating the same changes in brainwave frequencies and states as a dose of psilocybin used for severe depression or MDMA. So he says, you've got to do more. You've got to expand on this. L luckily, Cambridge University have come. They're expanding on this stuff uh, to see what else is going on. So, so these mystics already understood this and they would use controlled practices um, to get into all the states of consciousness where they would be able to manipulate their consciousness to a level where it would appear to other people as magic, right? Because they change so dramatically. So, or they change other people so dramatically. They can create a, a big change in a result, like a remission from a disease or something. So, so yeah, so in just 22 minutes, you can create a state that is akin to like what psychedelics do, but without any of the out of controlness that you can get from, from, you know, shamanic plant medicines or whatever. So that's what I'm so excited about. And that's, that's what we've now expanded upon. So we have these in the 21 days, much longer journeys that take people into profound altered states of consciousness where like I literally, I, I did one just now at, um, this event by Mind Valley in Jordan, right? In uh, this A Fest event, which is an amazing meeting of about 400 people, like a lot of very, very amazing, you know, people doing a big impact in the world. Uh, and um, so I, I'm one of their authors now, Mind Valley author. So I, I did, um, I got asked to do a, a few workshops there. And people were literally having full-blown like trips but in a controlled way there were people there who'd never taken psychedelics psych before you were saying they felt something they've never felt before it was like they're having a conversation with god with something beyond themselves and it was ended up being the most highest rate to the two breath workshops i did were the highest rated experiences of this event and this is there were people there who have done psychedelics people there who haven't 
and they're saying still this was one of the most profound experiences mm. of their life so just with a breath you can have peak experiences mm. like and it's these peak experiences and these heightened status of you know brainwave frequencies yeah. bringing it back to the brainwave frequencies which are which usually take a lot of effort to do we, we can do this just with the breath and music it's amazing and it doesn't <laughs> doesn't cost anything it's like it's you know it's exactly it's, you've got it there with you no all the side time. effects you don't have to go and find a dodgy dealer mm -hmm. you know. i'm so excited as the the impact that that has just on humanity when we're operating at those heightened states and what it unlocks within individuals but then collectively as well i'm curious to know Nimaj, what's your what's your vision for summer breath like where, where is it headed because you're already so far forward off the mark compared to let's say the the norm so what was where's it going you know like here's the thing so sometimes you can't you can't control things too much you have to allow the the, the baby to to find its own feet and grow on its own otherwise you if you over protect it and shelter it it will rebel or it will just not become the truth true version of itself right so if you have too much heavy protecting parents so i'm actually ours is very community driven like um so i'm i'm really allowing it to evolve through our instructors we train instructors we've got almost 2000 around the world it's growing really fast but i'm trying to really listen to our community and allow it to take a life of its own right without controlling it too much um and it's becoming so magic because every instructor brings their own flavor to the these experiences what i've created is a framework that allows instructors to to bring in their other modalities to create really amazing peak experiences for people like that they won't forget and stuff that also they look forward to doing every day right mm -hmm. so that they get healthier I call it my my mission is to make people high, happy, healthy. Because if we can make high, happy, healthy people in the world, nat naturally, like they tend to do, be nice to people and do good things in the world. Yeah, it's miserable people who tend to want to make people miserable because yeah. they're miserable usually, right? Yeah. So my my plan is to try and end that misery. Like there's no need for it on this planet. With all the tools we have, the, the level of consciousness awareness we have, and we are heading in the right, we have been heading in the right direction. The last few years was a bit of a glitch in the matrix, but I still think maybe that was necessary to, to shift yeah. the consciousness. It was a big satori for a lot of people, you know, like boom, like yeah. high impact awakening through a lot of drama and anguish and loss of trust of anything that's going on, you know, like who do you trust now, you know? So, um, yeah, there was a funny saying I said, uh, I think it was Russell Brown who said, where are the good guys? There's no good guys anymore. There's just baddies, right? And it's kind of a bit like that. And, and that's the thing. Like, whenever the pendulum goes super to the dark, inevitably it's going to shift at some point to the light. It has to. So, and usually when it gets super on one side dark, the, it goes to equal and opposite light, which is so bright that it, it was worth all the darkness, right? So that's that's been my life. But I see that's now happening in this reality. We're going through a big shift in in um, many things. The whole world's flipped upside down. And it's Kali Yuga, basically. We're in the Kali Yuga, this is another time that mystics talked about the age of darkness, where um, it's the age of ignorance, where people are so far away from truth that everything's upside down that's literally if you see the world is a bit like that but yet there's also a pendulum on the other side you can see people although there's so much darkness in the world there's so much light as well we're actually actually at the most peaceful time in humanity believe it or not even though there's a mm -hmm. war going on there's still it's still the most peaceful time to be alive it was way more intense um you know just even a few hundred years ago so so basically my my mission is to help people shine a light on the darkness and give people a a way to 
if they want to create a career that's really rewarding, fulfilling, that they can use either like as a full-time thing or add on to whatever they're doing to help people transition from maybe a career that they're not like aligned with because they don't want to work for this company that's doing this and this in the world and they want to do something more rewarding. A lot of people are starting to see that. They're having wake-up calls out of that. And so I'm giving people an option, you know, here, train in the summer breath, become an instructor. You can make an impact in the world already straight away. But also there's a lot of people suffering. You know, people are taking endless amounts of drugs and things that they don't need. Um, And so... I want to help spread that. I want to help like people become more informed um, and do it by adding science, by um, making it more fun, the experience, adding cooler music, having world-class musicians and producers involved. That's, that's what's happening. So um, slowly but surely, you know, the music will then have a new meaning and purpose. Like, you know, like, Let's be honest, like the last few years of what happened with the commercial music scene, like repetitive noise, <laughs> soulless, manufactured pop yeah. music, just literally there to churn out money without any soul or substance, you know. Mm-hmm. And But there's also so much incredible music. Although that's the mainstream, there's so much incredible artists and music out mm-hmm. there. Yeah, Spotify actually, believe it or not, it, yeah, it does screw artists, but it allowed so many more artists to get their stuff out there and get noticed. So it has its plus points as well. Um, so really what I'm trying to help is inspire also a lot more creativity, how to use music therapeutically, bring some meaning back to it um, and show that actually music, when it's done with a certain intention, can be extremely um, healing, therapeutic, um, rather than just creating, you know, a bunch of gangs, um, you know, mm. you want to yeah. harm people. And but, that's, yeah, that's that, unfortunately, that was manufactured. They used yeah. music intentionally to create a certain culture. They did it, it's mm. obvious. Um, and they did it. They hypnotized a bunch of people to wear a certain style of clothes, act a certain way to... Um, pretend that they you know so and so and um and they created a whole culture of people who are so far from their real truth mm. this is not who they truly are and you know like i had an amazing rave like I, I i'm a bit bitter about this stuff because i had an amazing rave people used to come together used to celebrate life they it was so pure full of love this is in 1999 but at the same time, there was this really horrible music scene of UK Garage. Some of the music was cool, but it, the people who represented it were like just talking absolute nonsense down the mic. If you meet the people in genuine, in, most of them are faking it. They're not really gangsters. They're not really this. They're not that. They're total wannabes, tryhards. And they're doing it because they don't know anything else. They've been brainwashed into thinking that's cool. So they end up in that culture and they do it. Mm. And then there was this huge shooting, totally unnecessary shooting that happened at this club that I did the raves at. And that killed the reputation of the club, right? So then that ended all the other cool stuff that was going on that was yeah. really amazing and beautiful and bringing people together. It killed it. Mm. Yeah. So, and that was because I really believe there's a purposeful intent by certain people in the music world to create a culture that is not for the betterment of people it creates disruption chaos disorder disharmony in the world and i want to help get rid of that because i've met a lot of people who who are in that music scene who didn't want to be a part of that thing they were just doing it because they didn't know anything else and these were like proper artists like who were like signed like on labels and stuff they didn't want to be a part of that culture they they like that i was like the um one of the, the the anomalies in that scene, in that whole underground music scene at that time, because I was bringing more of the hippie vibes to it, and uh, you know, and people looked up to that. But it's just unfortunate what happened. Like when people when people with a lot of power and money get hold of music, it can be they can weaponize it, they can use it in a very harmful way. 
you know, and cause a lot of destruction. You're taking yeah. me back to my raving days now. I used to go to right, Rain Dance, I think it was called now. Rain Dance in London Underground. Um, in the oh, old, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Old, I mean, uh, they the were good. Tunnels. They were like really cool, positive, loved up family like events, right? And then there was a period of time in around 2000 onwards where everything went dark. The and music that's, scene went very dark. Yeah. And that, that was got it. Involved. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was around that time and it was like it was great experience, great experience, like it, pretty much every opportunity would be there. And then there was a, like a super violent incident and it was just like, you know, it's just not worth yeah, it. And then it was it. like, yeah, exactly. They kill it completely. But what I'm loving, though, is the level of conscious music that I've noticed. Obviously, I'm not in the industry, but it's been very powerful in my own healing as well. Um, and Spotify has actually been the, the main place that I've been able to access new more conscious artists with a pure intention and um yeah very excited to see see what um what else is evolving and what's cooking on your end the right <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and like it's just great to see like um more and more artists singers out there with a real voice a message you know like mm -hmm. where are the people who sang the songs of hope freedom and and calling things out in a in a in a way you know like mm -hmm that got lost for a while you know yeah. the music industry was just churning out music that was talking about gang violence raping yeah. you know and yeah. bitches and sluts and hoes and all that shit and that was like the mainstream like there's so many kids were uh, uh, listening to that stuff and trying yeah. to dance to that stuff and it's like you're watching youtube it's like some of this music is so bad like i, I hate sounding old like a granddad but <laughs> come on like seriously it's so bad and you look at the count the views how many views it's like billions of views mm -hmm. and i know for a fact that they these videos are rigged mm -hmm. they're not really nobody's really watching but mm -hmm. people see that oh this video is that bit so it must be cool yeah and then that's how you create trends and you, you mm -hmm. use the music in a very bad it's like black magic mm -hmm. to create a trend around darkness chaos and disorder yeah. it's like why do people want to do that why do they have to do that yeah and we really um, un we really underestimate how deep that goes into our subconscious when you just you've got yeah. songs in the background when you go to places or in, in the car or the radio and that kind of stuff unless you're you are being more conscious with where you're put placing your attention like you said yeah. this kids are just soaking this stuff up and adults obviously but it's um goes back to what you were then saying earlier is that the work to do now is to unprogram yeah. that kind of stuff and remember who we are again yeah, I'm telling you, and those people I've met, I've met like people who are at the top of the game in those those worlds, you know, because of these this clubs and stuff. They don't want to, they don't want that life. They're, they're not doing it. They they get to that point and they think, oh my God, why the hell did I create a life like this, surrounded by all these like assholes? Mm -hmm. Most of them are unhappy, they're miserable, and you'll see them and they look glamorous and all this on YouTube. That's, they're not really genuinely like that. It's all yeah. staged and made up. And, um, but unfortunately kids see that they think it's cool and they imitate it. And, mm. and that's how you create culture. Like music creates culture. Like so many, think of all the trends, um, you know, as we're growing up that were created, like the way people wear certain jeans, clothes, mm. hats, jackets, all around a certain theme of music. Right. It, it, and the way people talk and the things they say, even the TV shows that watch, uh, the magazines they would read, um, mm the drugs they'll take, uh, so much of it's defined by music and the genres of music. So people underestimate the power of music yeah. to create a culture. Yeah. If we want to make a really good culture, like a positive one, that's going to work in harmony and um, where we so we're stopping the suffering and stopping the misery, uh, we, have to, we have to respect the music. We have to really understand the music that, that we listen to. And, it's, it's just, and I, we're, we're always so grateful to be able to speak to people like yourselves who are making a difference in the world, who are challenging the norm. And that's it's, it's people like yourself and other amazing guests we've had on this show that are making that difference, are helping to end that suffering and um, show people there is a different way. There's a better way. Yeah. There's a there's a there's an easier way. So we're so grateful to for you sharing your time with us today and having you here, be able to speak about this. So thank you so much for for being here. But before we do, I do want to be conscious of your time because I know you're a busy man. And yeah. uh, before we do wrap things up, is there anything else that you feel 
our listeners really need to know like any final words of wisdom before we finish up um final words of wisdom so i got i got there's a lot of things <laughs> say, like, and we'll be on for a while but um so there's a really cool uh um there's a book everybody should read a book called prometheus rising right to understand it's a very good manual of of how the mind and brain works it's written by a guy called robert anton wilson I highly recommend reading that book it talk, tells you all about how we're created as by society and culture and, and then how to deprogram ourselves and different methods of doing it it's very good there's that book and there's a book called undoing yourself christopher hyatt mm -hmm. amazing book and um and i also recommend uh like basically there's a if you really want to understand um health from a medical perspective but in a from a very very highly respected person i get a lot of my um wisdom from a guy called dr bm hegde he's an indian doctor he's like top of his game he's won the highest awards um watch all of his ted talks he will really debunk a lot of the nonsense in the in the medical That's industry um he's a total renegade like myself <laughs> But it's good to hear a lot of stuff from other, other than me. Fact check everything I'm saying, right? I, like, I've just given you a few sources, but fact check everything I'm saying. Don't trust everything I'm saying, right? Like straight away. You've got to do your own, little bit of your own research, right? Go away. We have loads of resources, articles on our website. L do your own research. Like, please do a bit more than just reading the headline on a blog post, yeah. right? If we're gonna, if you really want the best experience of your life, you have to go beyond the headline of the blog post and you have to go deep, right? That's the only way you're gonna make a big difference in your life. Um, if you go, unless you, if you go deep, then you can change, but otherwise you're gonna end up just being programmed by culture and society, right? If, you know, when something resonates with you and you feel the calling, don't be scared to go deep into something and really master something. You know, if you read one book, you're like, you know something more than um, your the people in your your house that you're living with. If you read two books, you probably know more than the street, right, that you're living on. If you read three or four books on a subject and go to university maybe, you know more than suddenly the whole town, right, and so on. So the more, the more you want to master something, the more you've got to go deep and studying, researching, yeah. cross-referencing. Um, but if you think you know it all because you read some short article in The Guardian that tells you that, um, you know, this untested vaccine is gonna uh, be safe, so don't worry, just listen to us, then you're gonna, you're gonna believe nonsense and you're gonna be fooled and you're gonna end up in a yeah. really shitty situation as one of my friends has been in who's now paralyzed, um, so, you know, I don't want to put fear into people, but seriously, wake up, start doing, really do research, yeah. study, test things out on yourself, then come to a conclusion. Do not believe everything that I've just said yeah. um, firsthand. Do your own research, right. please. It, it comes a point. Way. It comes a point where we need to take responsibility, <laughs> and we have to take responsibility. Yeah. If you just think that somebody else has all the answers then i'm sorry culture isn't your friend it does not have your best interests at heart yeah. right you know there's some people you can trust you, you know that that have your interests but you've got to you've got to go deep within yeah absolutely awesome. thank you that was definitely words of wisdom yeah. right there <laughs> um so niraj where can our listeners find you to explore summer breath uh just go to summerbreath.com um sign up for the free mask class you can check out a bunch of our stuff um you can also uh go to youtube channel soma breath um and also on facebook uh, awesome. we have a group called soma breath you can join it's super buzzing great community nice. even if all you did was just make a few friends in the community like if you feel like you're on your own right now and you, you just feel alone you people don't understand you this is another thing that holds people back is their surrounding their environment like i literally when i was sick i had to move to a whole new place i had to get away from the environment because the environment was telling me stress doesn't make a difference 
diet doesn't make a difference shut up take the pills you know that's all you can do that's the only hope wear a nappy you know that's i was in so much negativity like that and so much fear because so many people like bless them they they had my best interest they were they were they were worrying i mean they didn't have my best interest because they didn't know they don't know what they don't know so they had the interests of the conventional medical system which doesn't have your your best interests yeah. unfortunately they think that they do but they don't so i was stuck and i had to shift i had to go into a whole new environment i had to literally run away from my house and be on my own um i ended up with a, my friend um we made a load of music together he's a doctor who was the only one crazy enough to to listen to me at that time um so now we have the internet like we didn't have back then i didn't there was not so much facebook as there is now but we've created this amazing community of people on facebook where let's say you're feeling alone right now you don't feel like you belong to anyone you're you, you you're scared to try something like spiritual because people around you think you're mad well go and join our facebook group connect with a few people there you'll see that there's loads of other mad people right that you'll be able to connect with and hang out with and um and you'll find that actually most of them are quite normal everyday people um probably just like you and you'll make a new friends and through that you'll probably get more inspired to to change you know so okay. yeah well yeah well we've done put all those links in the show notes so anyone listening go over there fly, and it easily be able to find um, niraj and summer breath and try out the free master class give it a go Obviously, after the after the one I tried the twenty one day awakening, I could definitely say it's a powerful experience. So give it yeah. a go. And 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 on last note, a caveat: I'm not anti-vax. Yeah. For those people who <laughs> like to, you know, bash anti-vaxxers, yeah. I'm not for the record. And I'm I'm all for safe and effective vaccines. That's the caveat. All right, safe yeah. and effective, proven, hundred percent tested and tried legitimately absolutely agree amazing brilliant Nourish, right. thank you so much for your time today but thank you even more for what it is you're up to in the world we appreciate you and i have no doubt your community does it even more and the collective is going to be really really exciting for what else is coming mm -hmm.